What is going on everyone? Nadi just here with another Advanced Wars by way of replay analysis. Today, we're looking at ourselves a game from the Nutty Lower Level Series. The series where you guys submit your games to me and we look at them. We see what you did wrong, what you did right, what can help you sleep at night. And we have ourselves a good laugh, a good analysis, and we learn from it. So if you're interested in having your games reviewed, please send me your nuttiest craziest, most baboonyest games to me at djsproductions at gma.com on CD-ROM and you might enter for a chance to win your game reviewed on my channel. There is a certain set of criteria you have to be uh, to have and you can look at it in the more info section of this video but please keep submitting the games. I get thousands of them but you still can win. Never forget that and remember if you want a higher chance of your games to be reviewed please choose maps that I have not reviewed already on my channel for an exponentially better chance of getting your game reviewed. Anyway, as far as this game goes, it is part of the Nutty Lower Level series, however, I would not classify these people as lower level. We have two 1250 players right now, quite high level players if you ask me in the grand scheme of things. Probably top 5% of players in Advanced Wars by Web. So, these are not some lower level players, but this is user submitted and I can confirm it is Nutty. One of the reasons why this is a Nutty matchup is because it features one of my favorite matchups in all of Advanced Wars. The Blue Haired. Tumorous Muscle Man Max versus the laid back possum spit sipping grit. The battle of the direct specialist versus the indirect specialist on a two base map where they're the most equal. As far as this matchup goes on my channel, grit always seems to get the winning end of the stick as far as this matchup goes. Will this be the time Max strikes back? Because typically, if you all recall, grit is actually tier one in fog. But on certain maps, typically two base maps, he drops down from tier 1 to tier 2, where you can play the likes of Olaf, Eagle, and Max. Typically, Eagle will beat Grit. Olaf has good chances of Grit as well, but Max has a tough matchup versus Grit because he has to pounce early and really bash him to smithereens early on in the game. Or else, Grit's going to proliferate that large artillery army. Hell, he doesn't even need to build rockets. Just a ton of artillery, ton of recons, anti-air, and he's good to go, and he will win any matchup, typically. So typically, Max needs to strike early with those freaky Rikis. That's right, Recons are quite powerful against Grit. You typically want to spam some Recons for good intelligence. And they also do a number of damage against those artillery and are cost effective against artillery because they only cost 4k, the artillery's cost 6k. So you can actually build a bunch of Recons and a lot of Copters. Another thing, Copters are great against Grit because he can build his anti-air, but if you sp Copter spam him, you typically won't have enough to deal with him. Which brings me to this map right here. Bohemian Skies. Now, a reason Max has some better chances against Grit on this map are twofold. One, each side has two airports, not just one, two airports. So Max can actually spam out those Battlecopters, where in typical maps you get one airport. So two airports, double the B-Copters, Max's chances are looking much better on typical maps. Another reason why, two Calm Towers each side. Two Calm Towers each side allows Max tanks to one-shot infantry on planes with a roll. You can one-shot a whole bunch of other stuff, artillery with his towers. So you can really blast through a bunch of infantry walls, artillery walls, etc. with those new found KOs found by using his comm towers. So Max has some great chances. Now there are a few things that are working against Max in this map. Number one, Grit hates front shifting because his artillery take forever to shift to the other side of the map. Max tanks can shift over and completely overwhelm his artillery position, so he hates front shifting. Luckily for Grit, Bohemian Skies is a very anti-front shifting map. If you look right here, there's actually two pipe seams right next to the bases, so it is very difficult to shift in front forces north or south without breaking through those pipe seams, which dedicates a lot of effort and time in order to blast through them. Number two, once you get through that and you ring around the rosy over here, you run into another pipe seam, so you have to keep going further all the way over to this little shoal area over here in order to reunite your forces. So front shifting is very difficult on this map. You're going to see a lot less strong side, weak side, a lot more equal sides, which Grit really shines in because he doesn't want to face a lot of troops in one spot. He wants to have his artillery planted, have a little bit of an infantry wall, really spread out the forces. So he doesn't have to front shift and have to keep up with Max who keeps front shifting back and forth. But like I said, Max has copters on each side, and copters can front shift on this map quite easily. They don't care about this river. They don't care about these sea tiles. Copters can shift easily. So you can see a lot of copter front shifting going on. So while these land units get mucked up in the bog, they can't really reinforce. There's all these sea and rivers in the way. No, the copters can just 
zoom right over that. So we're gonna see a very interesting map right here with air unit front shifts, but not land unit front shifts for the most part. And then you're very vulnerable in the middle too. You pull up a recon here and you have to go through these shoals. You're gonna get blasted if you put your units on shoals and they're undefended. So I'm very curious how this is gonna play out. Another thing about this map, there is little island chains where you can get the comp tower, where you can get these properties over here. Typically, I go for the early T-Copter in this map. I don't think you really gain that much going for an early recon here. I typically believe you should go for an early T-Copter, get these properties as early as possible. You don't have to get the comm tower quite as early. I would get double T-Copter, one up here, one down here. I actually played this map before against Thomas Maximus in a live game, Drake versus Rachel. And I played Drake and I still bought two T-Copters because I wanted one down here to get this and one to go up here. And I honestly got away with murder for the longest time because he couldn't really punish me for going two T-Copters because it takes so long to go on the offensive over here. And if he does go on the offensive and overextend, you can reinforce very easily with these T-Copters, or B-Copters rather. So typically, T-Copters are the way to go. Another thing, since it is a two Tom Tower map, Grit's Battlecopters aren't that bad. They're gonna have two boosties, which makes them equal to normal Battlecopter power, 100% Battlecopter power. So they're not that bad. So you can see some grit uh, Battlecopters coming into play on this map. Meanwhile, Max Battlecopters probably nearly one shot other Battlecopters because they're gonna have, oh God, 140% damage. They're really strong Battlecopters. So you gotta watch out for those. But as grit, I would not be surprised to see some Battlecopter spamage going on on this map. And you also have two labs instead of HQ. You have to capture both labs in order to win. If you have one lab, you survive. If you lose all your labs, you lose. So as long as you have one, you can have one, two, three, four, 12. No one cares. But if you run out of all your labs, you lose. But on this map, let's be honest, there's no lab caps going on. There's no Sammy or anything like that. So the game is not gonna lose that or end that way. Anyway, without further ado, let us begin this nutty game. So in the left, in the raunchy reds, we have Max while on the right side. In the big blues, we have High Noon as Grit. So, so far, so usual. Sometimes people like to opt to go to the middle over here because there's a chain. Red opting go to the top over here, going for this chain over here. Get the airport early, and this is actually a nicer chain. Boom, 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 look at that difference chain. Whereas over here, boom, boom, that's still pretty nice, but not as much of a chain. So red spots the optimal chain. Good job, blue does as well. No one's getting suckered into this map. Pretty equal start so far. I wouldn't expect an early recon. Typically, you're gonna see uh, in two base map like this where it's very hard to go all the way over here. You're not gonna see early recons. They're not gonna get that much pressure done. You wanna save up for those T-copters, like I said. Go for the economy build. Go for the macro build. You're not trying to go for early aggression here. Even as max, you see no early cop or no recons here. Save up for that T-copter. Get some nice income. We're not gonna see units for a while, I don't think. Maybe this turn? Nope, not even. So, so far, so normal. Blue going over here to the top over here. There is no strong or weak side, really. You can choose, really, anything. Because the airport reinforces both sides, so there's not really that much distinguishing it. If I had to choose, I guess this is blue's strong side, because there's an HQ on this over here, and it's not that hard to reinforce. It's, it's really not really that much strong side, weak side. So we're probably going to see, yep, our first artillery here. I would not expect them to bust open the pipe scene. Like I said, sure, you can reinforce a side, but it's not really going to be worth it. I don't even think it's worth it busting any of these pipe scenes. It's probably just going to go south. Ooh, if you plop it in that forest right there, that's beautiful. You're going to cover a lot of properties there. These forests, there's not many of them, but where they are, yeah, you want to put some artillery in those. So, see what how red reacts to that. D double reeky this turn, maybe? Double Riki would be pretty sweet. Okay, early T-Copter, I love it. I love the early T-Copter I read. I like his, his opening so far a lot. Now we got a T-Copter for blue. He could have gone, no, he couldn't have gotten it last time. He got his copter a little bit later than red. Uh, actually, no, they got him the same exact turn. What am I talking about? I'm babbling. I'm babbling. I'm a babbling baboon. Ooh, I love this. And then this goes south in perfect T-Copter range. And then boom, next turn, red. Muji over here. Muji optimizing this build right here. I love what I'm seeing by Muji so far. And Blue's actually playing very well. Like I said, 1250 level players, they know they can hold their own in the openings. They know what they're doing. Very skilled opening so far and beautiful. A little boosty here for that. A little boosty here for that. And then one of them is going to go over there. Probably this guy over here, back there. This guy captures here. This guy captures there. Beautiful. Just love what I'm seeing so far. And see, we got some dabbling going on, which is fine. Dabbling on a map like this where you can't friend shift, perfectly fine, especially if you're grit. Dabbling is the name of the game if you're grit because it's gonna be harder for them to break through all your walls when they have less units to do so. So, 
That's grit. Not a problem. The recon, see, it looks, it takes so long for it to even get in the range. It takes four turns to even see anything. So that's why you don't go a day three recon on this map. Go for the economy. Go for the early nice T-copter builds. Build another T-copter here and get those double commies probably soon. I'm expecting a T-copter from blue here this turn probably. T-copter, artillery, infantry would be a great build right here. Uh, that's what I would expect. Uh, that's what I would expect. Q. Ooh, no, he doesn't do it. So he has enough. T-copter, artillery, infantry is also 12k, so that would be perfect. He's, he's going for the double artillery on... That's fine. No, no issues. That's no, just fine. He doesn't have to go that early. But, um... So we already have the artillery in the dream spot. So that's going to get blasted. So if I'm blue, I'm feeling good. Luckily, red is going strong side up here rather than strong side down here. So this artillery is going to feast next turn. A feast for the beast, if you will. But red's over here. Luck, I, I like this move. He does not reveal his recon. Some dummies might put it, like, right here. He doesn't even attack. He's scared, so I like it. Don't even reveal it, because you know the infantry won't see, although this turn they will see, but you can get an interrupt and kill right there. So I like hiding the recon. Don't reveal it so early. You let Blue think, maybe there's a strong side over here. Maybe there's a strong side over here. He doesn't really know. That's where the recon comes into play. You have more intelligence than your opponent. Use that intelligence to your advantage. Blue is delayed his recon. He will have less intel than Red will. Use that intelligence. Make Blue unsure of where to react to. So, I like it so far. I'm probably seeing an early B-copter here, if I were Red, maybe. Nope, still going for vehicles. So now the recon comes in. Kapalga, that is a... Kilio right there. So now Red for sure knows there's an artillery over here, and he's probably going to back up. He's going to back the bluff up. But the thing is, you attack down here, you reveal your artillery. I wouldn't go attack or go for caps over here. Yeah, you're going to get blasted. So, and there's nothing to support back here. There's no tanks. The thing, a common misconception with Grid is, all he needs artillery. Who needs tanks? No, you still need tanks. They're going to have weaker firepower, 80%. I mean, they're going to have 100% after the two comm towers, but still, you need tanks. They have six movement, three vision. They're good backbone unit to have. Sure, you want a lot of artillery, but in most instances, you want as many tanks as artillery. Maybe like six artillery, six tanks is a good mix. Maybe go seven artillery, five tanks, but you do want a large amount of tanks. Like, I, I would hope for a double tank turn here for blue. That'd be the smart move for an anti-air tank. Oh, he's going double anti-air. I don't like that. What does he have the answer for this tank over here? He has no answer for this tank. So it's going to get a little broody, brutal sh uh, baboombo around going on here. He's going to... I would have killed this and just capped that, but... I guess he doesn't know if there's any artillery over there. I would have gone for the kill. The rule of three, like I said. Attack, attack, cap. I, I don't like this little wimpkin move over here. Kill that little mother cluckler. Kill him. I don't like this either. You just got Gaboom good over here, and you're going for this cap over here. This better retreat. This better not go into the void. I mean, he's a 1250. He can't be doing that shit. What is this passive little boy doing over here? He's really scared of the grit. Look, you see no artillery. I mean, even if there's one on a road here, the recon will hit it next turn. Like, uh, and this will... You gotta attack that. He's being very scared. He must have, like, fought a grit before and put his hand on the stove. Just got burned. He's like, oh, 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 oh. And he has those, like, PTSD from playing past grits or something. So I don't get it. But you gotta be aggressive. You gotta... Look, if he didn't get attacked here, I understand here. But you got attacked here. That gives you info that there is an anti... Or an artillery over here. So if there's an anti... Or, or artillery down there, there's less of a chance it's gonna be up here. It also takes forever to reinforce. It takes, like, a billion turns to even reach there. He, hell, he could even count. One turn. Two turn. Three turn. So it would be here, not here. So... And he doesn't see it because there's no recon, so... I mean, actually, he could just go down here rather than up there. But anyway, like I said, he should be more aggressive, in my opinion. And he builds the next D-copter. He's ready to get that copter up here. Uh, kind of curious why I didn't... Oh, he went triple. Wow. Or double uh, copters over here. That's why I went up... Oh, wait a minute. He brought this one over here. He didn't build it. I thought there was an airport there for some reason. I lost my mind. He's going double B-copter. Double air units. And I'm expecting this to go shift up here. So he's going to have a shit ton of B-copters. I love it. B-copter proliferation. This anti is going to be lost down here. All the B-copters are going north. They're all flying to the north for the summertime like birds do. And they're going to peck their eyes out. Bagok. So now the artillery retreats and now you can't cap the property. You would have been able to cap the property. I know hindsight's 2020, and we all see the perfect vision perfect intel because we're the spectators we're not in the match still that was a golden opportunity to grab it 
I would have done it. If I was playing, I would have done it. I'm speaking from personal experience. If I see this down here attack me, and I see all these infantry, I'm gonna attack that shit. And if he attacks into me, I have a bunch of reinforcements too. Hell, I got recons, tanks over here. It's your strong side for God's sake. So now, Blue's definitely gonna attack that, interrupt that, Bagunga. Not, doesn't kill yet, because he has no comm towers. He's working on it though. You don't need to rush the comm towers, like I said, until you get fights. So now, Blue is locked down this position. Luckily for Red, he sees the artillery over here. He doesn't know about that one, but he sees one over there. He probably will not attack. He doesn't have enough firepower in range. He has enough firepower, but it's not in range. It's too far back. He needs to move one tank to this forest, move this tank onto this city maybe or something like, but now he can't capture this. He can't capture this. Lost the golden opportunity. This recon's being super aggressive, but he sees the artillery. The artillery moved from its force over there. This one's going to take its spot. And he actually was able to capture this, or hold on to this property. Blue never went for it. Very interesting. So now he goes for this property. And now he sees there's two artillery. He saw one and he missed, the, or he left the other one there. Ooh, you got to be a little, a little scared right there. So now the copter, this one actually is not migrating north for the winter or the summer. He's, uh, he's going down there. He's dabbling a bit. If I were Max, I'd just go all out on the top and just plow through this force over here maybe go for an airport lock get your own uh anti-air he seems to be not going for any anti-air because he could believes his copters one shot grit copters so maybe there's no need for them but i still would probably get an anti-air and there you go you're never gonna get that property but this is a little shaky wall and uh unfortunately for max he only has one comp tower instead of two right now but if he had two that's a one shot that's a one shot boom -ba. That would hurt a lot. I still think that recon might one shot on the road, but this is scary over here. If I'm red, I see all this shit unfold. I have a recon here, I have a recon here. I have beautiful intel. I'm probably gonna have one shot that copter and then retreat. I, I feel like I'd wanna kill that copter really badly. So maybe he won't. I probably would attack into that actually, now, now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe shift this tank down here. This is actually a beautiful time for a front shift. Bring this tank here. Bring this recon down here, bring this tank here, bring this copter down here, and you can actually overwhelm this. You see all this? This is all locked, right? This is all locked, so why would you fight into that? I would all front shift down here, or I would all front shift up here. I would not just maintain the status quo and do two different fronts. So let's see what Red does here. Which, what does he opt to do? He attacks, which is what I would do. One shot? No, that would suck, because then you could have uh, potentially put an infantry here, revealed, and then attacked the, uh, the thing, so. Sucks not to have a comm tower there, but he's not front shifting. He's not bringing these guys down. I would have brought him down. Would have brought him down, but he's just proliferating. Building his double copter build again. He's got so many copters. Look at Red over here. They have equal income for the most part. Five copters to one copter or two copters. Well, that's pretty much dead. So yeah, Red's loving his copters. And I love having this mountain over here because you have perfect vision here, you have vision here, you have vision here. Red is seeing everything. His intel is fabulous. Blue's intel is pretty okay. Not quite as good as Red's. He has this, this recon right here, but he does not have control of that mountain. So that's a dead copter. Boonga, boonga, boonga. Now it's too late. Now you have nothing here and you have nothing to reinforce and kill off that. If you have a tank here, you kill that. You have this other recon or... In like, you kill that off, you have two more copters, plow, plow, you win the bottom. You just win it. You win it. That's it. I really would have loved a front shift right there. Either you go up and don't attack, or you go down and you do attack. He attacked and he didn't move his top forces at all. They kind of sat there passively. This is a higher level thing. 1250s might not get it. 1350s definitely get it. 1400s get it. It's just a little higher level thing. Choose your fronts. And if you're going to go all in, you go all in. You don't just dab a little, little bit. Grit can dabble on this map. He can, he loves dabbling. Grit is a dabbler by trade. He wants to separate your forces. He wants you to not overcome. Eagle matchup as well. You don't want Eagle to get into a death ball. Just like here, you don't want Max to get into a death ball. Keep them separated. Keep them separate as Grit. You love the two fronts. It's harder to reach your artillery. You're all good. So he's happy with the outcome there. And now you can't attack into this. You just have to retreat. You're gonna get both these as blue. What's Red gonna do there? He has to attack, because if he doesn't attack, he loses down here, he has no wins up here. So he has to attack this turn, or else he concedes defeat. Basically, he just gave up all this shit for free, so he has to have some counterplay. Luckily for him, he does have two copters here, a recon, and three tanks, so he will easily be able to break through here. Unfortunately, he's just waiting for that last comm tower, and Blue doesn't have anything in range for this comm tower over here. I don't know why he's not going for this comm tower yet. He's 
delaying it a bit. I guess it's not as important for grit as it is for max, but boomba, not quite there. Copter comes in, not gonna be a KO. Infantry will KO, and then you're gonna kill this. Ooh, he's gonna hit both of these artillery. Ooh, boomba, one shot. Not quite a one shot with one tower, but you love it. Now you're seeing it. Max is pouncing, like I said. Mm. Shift this bad boy up, go to that silo. All in, baby, all in, but he's not. He's, he's holding back, he's holding back. That's fine, but it's not what I would have done. I, like I said, if you're Max, you wanna Max blast your way in there. You come out blasting. So hard that my blue light glasses fell off. Anyway, so now what is High Noon gonna do? Is he gonna shoot from the hip like grip? Boom. Is he gonna hold on to his power? Is he gonna use it? He attacks in, kills one copter. Kills another copter or weakens it severely. Ooh, this is it's gonna attack back, bring him down to three. This is like an equal trade. If Grid attacks first with a copter, it's like an equal trade. That's how bad his copters are without uh, two comp towers. So that is a dead copter. Red's looking really good at the top. Blue's looking really good at the bottom. A tale of two cities, two shitty cities. Boom, twofold. Comes in, kills it, and you get the intel. You see the copter there, you can go for the airport lock. You kill this with the copter, you get the airport lock. Kill the intel, I love it. Kill the intel first before you make your moves. Then you show what you do. And then, I mean, you don't show what you do. You attack and you don't reveal what you're doing. So, boom, boom, kills the anti-air. Gets the crap pretty over there. This is a little feisty over here with the tank. Um, okay. Gonna kill this copter. Probably kill with this copter first and bring this one over here. Yeah, exactly. Boom, one shot. And then this copter in range perfectly. Airport lock via copter. You don't see this very often. Often, Airport lock via copter. That's the power of max. And they're both charged fully. Are we going to see a super snap or whatever? Snap the bap. Whatever the hell they call it. I don't even know. But oh my gosh. Red should be loving what's going on so far. Muji. Muji. Um, one shot from here. One I wouldn't pop a super snipe. You only have one artillery is going to hit, so he's not going to use it. He just gets one hit. I guess it's a copter boost. Wow, he just killed one tank, and then the copter boost on the tank. Yeah, I don't really like that snipe attack. You only got one hit from that. One hit is grit. Boom. And these are both going to die. Ooh, missiles, though. Whoa, look at that range. Boom. -ba. Boomba! Oh my god, but this missile is 12k, and if it shoots, it also base locks on a two base map, base, you know, blocks your base, so you won't be able to produce a unit next turn, so that's a risky buy right there, but it's feisty, I kind of like it, your grit. I probably would have gone anti-air though, let's be honest here, I would have gone anti-air, like, I understand why these are probably going to die, but still, let's see what, is Muji going to do a power, or is he going to use a superpower? If I'm Muji, oh, he's going to get the cap too. Let's see if he gets it first. Does he realize he has it? Use it first before you attack. There you go. Now he's got super strong powers. These are going to be one shots, I think, even without a power. Does he need to use a power here? Boom, boom. And this 4 HP is going to do a lot to that one, probably. Probably do like 6 damage with the super power. He can go to town here. Max force. Not a max blast, max force. So just a power. They're both kind of equalizing a little bit. He's like, oh, you know what? Whatever. I'm just going to use my power. He's shifting his copters north, so now he's finally doing the front shift. This looks more of like a movement bonus power rather than a damage power. I mean, these are both going to get one shot, obviously. Boom, one shot. Boom, one shot. Whoa! Really? I'm surprised by that outcome. That's a one shot for sure. Reveal this, and then you kill off. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Bye-bye, artillery. Pow! Oh, I know why they're not dying. It's because they have the grit power defense. That is a one shot normally, but he has the 10% extra defense. And that has extra defense. Kill off the mech. Katangus. And he's looking pretty good. Red's looking pretty good. He's probably going to cap that. Probably. Uh, we'll see if he can. Because grit will have a... One dead copter. Two dead copter. That's not even going to be a good... Uh, it's still at five damage. Okay, not terrible. That's gonna not kill because he's super strong. And finally, Blue is going for this angling for that uh, comp tower at the bottom. He is at a comp tower disadvantage right now, but it's not looking too too bad. 
Uh, so red is definitely overextended, so he probably has to retreat here. Because blue actually, like I said earlier, red, front shift, red, front shift, please front shift, freeze, freeze front shift, doesn't do it. Blue's front shifting. Hey, if no one's going to do it, blue's going to freaking do it. Look at this. Goes down here. There he over here. The artillery front shift. That's right, the artillery front shift. So, just saying, you can do, you can actually pull off a front shift. Hey, if no one's gonna do it, F it, I'm gonna do it, said Blue. High Noon says, you're you're a goon, Muji. I'm gonna front shift. If, you're, if no one's gonna do it, you're gonna be a poo about it, I'm gonna front shift. I'm impressed by this grid front shift. It's working so far. So, forget what I said about, you can never front shift this grid. You can, it's difficult. But you have to be, not for the faint of heart. And apparently High Noon is not the faint of heart. However, Moo, retreat. Retreat. You got what you wanted. You got two properties, retreat. Use what you got and leave. But he's not. He's, uh, he's attacking in. Oh, why aren't you going straight back over here, dude? Why are you going down here? Onto a road? Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't know these are front shifted, but also that's like just no intel. You have no recon in place. You can't really see what's going on. So now Red's getting an inkling of what's going. He sees all this stuff. He's like, oh, so there must be not much over here now. So I can pounce. So at least he has that spidey sense. He's like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, if he's got all these units up there, he's not going to have that many down there. I should probably attack. Smart move, Mooj. Come on, Mooj. Time to move, Mooj. And he builds his first anti-air on day 16. Pretty late, but like I said, his coppers are pretty decent anti-air units. So, you know, they can hold their own. That's a dead tank. That's two dead tanks. Three dead tanks. So that front shift's paying off. Boomba. And blue should be pretty happy. Let's look at the KD right now. Mm, yep. Like I said, Grit usually gets the KD ratio in his favor because he's typically going to have less income because he's a little more passive on the direct units, but he's going to have a lot more kills because artillery are hard to kill and they can get some nice super snipes in and get some shots in without any retribution. That's the power of the indirects. You fire it and they don't fire back. There's no counterattacks and indirect attacks. That's why he's so much better on the kills to death. So, as Grit, if you're playing against a Grit, expect to be losing the kills to death. You have to win on the income. You have to win on the unit value. That's how you win the game. You can't have the unit count versus Grit. It's just too difficult. But now Grit's being a little reckless over here. He's attacking into this. He only has one artillery. Oh, bye-bye. Muji's. Muji's going to move on this. Ooh, Muji. Power is going to reach that too. Oh, he might kill that too. Oh, this could be a brutal turn. This could be a brutal turn. Muji might uh, show the moves. Oh, he's not using his power yet. I don't think he'll use a mid-turn power. I don't like... Okay. Okay. I would attack here first to see what's going on. Oh, he's not going to use... He has no idea. I would have moved the recon first. And then you could see. But he's not doing that. He's going for a safe move, which is fine. Kalafi's used infantry. This can't reach you unless he uses a power, which he might actually do, to be honest. Um, let's see if he does use a power, but... Okay, so now movie, Muji is moving. Movie. Movie. The cow. Oh my god, look at these copters. The thing is, there's no tanks, so there's nothing to kill this anti-air. There's nothing to kill this missile over here. You, you just have copters. That's all he has. He needs tanks up here. He has no tanks. They're all down here. High Noon might be murdering some of those units. And by murdering, I mean all of these units over here. They're all going to die. I didn't like this little attack over here. He stopped the cap, but at what cost? Like, and he, oh, it wasn't even capped. Back the blub up, dude. It's not worth it. You're going to lose four infantry for the cost of one. Oh, boy. So this is going to be interesting. So, gets the comm tower. Dead. 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 And the missiles moves in. So if you dare attack any of that stuff... Lucky for him, the recon sees all this shit. The recon, the sneaky reeky, the freaky reeky, the sneaky reeky, the peaky reeky. He's getting a nice little peak over here, the peaky reeky. Look at all this. this is peak reek right here. This is some peak reek. Look at all this shit. Getting the sneak peek of this peak reek. Sees everything. That snuck in there. I don't think Blue knew about it. And now he reveals the missiles. He reveals the mech. He reveals all the copters. He has behind the lines intelligence. A very rare accomplishment. So that sneaky reeky really paying off right now. And he can see if these front shift up here or they go down. And they all do move up. So he sees them. He saw one of them, I think. Um, Why isn't the vision showing? I don't know. Anyway. Sneaky Riki builds a fighter as grid. 
Um, well, it gets to the front lines very quickly, so that's good. He doesn't have income advantage, though, so I'm not entirely sure about that. He sees a shit ton of copters, but I mean... And that's one thing that Red needs anti-air for. He hasn't had anti-air, so he needs it for this this fighter. And I guess Blue's trying to exploit that Red only has B-copters as his anti-air. He has nothing else to actually kill off air units, so bombers will get away with murder, fighters will get away with murder. So he's kind of playing off of that. This recon sacks itself. That is a, uh, a peaky reeky that's going to get uh, deleted, mildly to say. And uh, now Red is retreating for the most part. He did a little freaky reeky. Give him a little poke over there, did zero damage, even with two comm towers. Um, so all these copters are falling back. Now Red's kind of shifting to the bottom. I would have brought all these down. Like, he's, they're not doing anything over here. They need to exert pressure. And he has nothing for these, so he needs to wait for the tanks to get in over here, or else they're kind of useless. So now Red's trying to go for some prop plays over here. He can get this one property. Will he be able to get anything out of it? Other than that one property, maybe put a little more pressure. Boom, boom, boom. Red's going to get this property easily. Red's going to get this property pretty easily. Well, I wouldn't say easily. This one's going to be a little challenging, depending on where Red goes. But it, whatever attacks, it's going to die. And he builds a Neo tank. Now, if I were blue here, I wouldn't go Neo tank. I'd probably go Copter, Tank, Artillery, or something like that. I, you still want some more indirect units and some recons as well. You have well, you use two recons over here and one over here. Yeah, it's actually fine. You typically want at least three recons on this map. There's not that many mountains other than this one right here and this one right here, and then in the middle. Uh, well, I guess this one as well, but like, I don't know, taking up to a Neo tank is grit. Uh, I'd rather go for more units. I probably want more indirects. Like, buy another indirect, buy another like rocket or missile or something like that. If you have a rocket and you place it here, he won't be able to ever really extend, so. I don't know, maybe that's just me. As grit, I really don't tech up as much. So we'll see if it works out for him. Because a bomber's going to murder that. Or even copters are going to swarm that and kill it in probably three hits. Especially with the power. So. Red really needs a recon over here. He's really late to the party with this recon. He can't see shit. He needs to get on the top of this mountain right here. Because he can't see shit. He can't see that he's actually going to be in artillery range. If those artillery do use their power right here. So. Pretty dead even so far though. 23k each. That's a dead tank. With a snipe attack. Yep. Not dead but it's going to be down to 2 HP. Dongs, dongs. That's a dead arc. These things are just. Why did this go over here? I don't know why Red like sacrifices to the gods. Like that just seems so reckless. Bye bye tanky. Down to two HP most likely. Down one HP. Excuse me. Two comm towers. Bye bye tanky. Yanked it. Tank got yanked. And the fighter gets in, and there is no counterattack. That is why you don't gamble with only copters. You need anti-air presence. You need anti-air. I know copters are a good deterrent for destroying other air units, but you need anti-air. There's a, such thing as bombers. This is a high income map. Such thing as fighters. I actually like this fighter build. It worked out for blue. It still one-shots things. With two comp towers, these fighters still one-shot copters, so they're still pretty good. But now we have a max force, not a max blast, another power. So we go into a attack into this somehow? Let's see what he does here. That's a one-shot, obviously. That's gonna be a one-shot, obviously. When I say obviously, I guess not. He always attacks his power into another power, so that extra 10% defense is actually really helping him out. E um, okay. That's not gonna cut it. No, oh, Red's gonna get blasted. Is he gonna trap this uh, fighter? Okay, that's decent. This is decent. He builds his own fighter, at least. Uh, this is not going to work out for Red. Grit's going to feast right here. A feast for the beast. Boom. 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 Oh, he's getting a little cocky with the fighter, though. That fighter's going to die. And then a bomber. See, like I said, you attack a Neo Tank over here. A bomber can reach you in one turn. I don't like Neo Tank on this map, really. Maybe a medium tank, but a bomber's just going to come in. You're going to need an artillery or anti-air. He needs to build an anti-air this turn. If you build a Neo tank, you're gonna need that anti-air. So he's retreating. Actually, Red can swarm. Look at all these copters. You yield two of them, but it's not enough. Beep beep. In comes Red. Boom. Bye bye missiles. Good pangus. Oh, he's coming in hot. He's coming in hot. Oh, use your power. One shot that shit. One shot that shit. Why is he not using his power? Interesting. I think a power. Damn, he killed a 4 HP anti-air with a copter. That's the power of two comm towers, baby. 
Uh, this is not a one shot, I don't think. Burbangus. Okay. Burbangus. You guys know that's the word? Apparently it is now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I sound so obnoxious. But like I said, you're going to get punished to build that Neo Tank. What's he going to do? It can't even attack anything. What's he going to do? Attack this recon and get destroyed? I like keeping that alive. Get some nice intel for front shifts. Super snipe. That's right. That is a superpower. These are all dying. That's dead. That's dead. That's dead if he gets vision. Mm, nothing's dead. Okay, so just three attacks. Boom, dead. Boom, dead. Copters come in, boom, dead. But these copters, they're flooding. The Neo Tank's like, uh, I have a bad feeling about this. And he knows better. Is he gonna trap that fighter? Luckily, he doesn't have anything that can actually kill that fighter. So uh, that fighter can hunt and kill something. Although it's covering both of these copters now. So he, the fighter can't hunt and kill anything except for this T-copter maybe, not even the T-copter. But now we're seeing a max blast that we got. They keep emulating each other. I use a power, you use a power, I'll use a power, use a power, I use a superpower, I use a superpower. So what's gonna happen now? Bomber, big beefy bomber. He knows the Neo Tank. I think he spotted the Neo Tank. Let's look. Is that one HP copter paying off dividends? Yeah, the copter saw it. That's why you keep those little wimpkins alive. Look at that intel. He saw the Neo Tank go across this lab. The bomber is ready for the fight. He's hunting the Neo Tank. It's like a wild saber-toothed tiger versus a woolly mammoth. He's gonna murder that Mio tank. He thinks he's front shifting. Oh, you think? Oh my God! Look at that range. Look at this range. Boom! This can freaking front shift all the way over there if it wants to. One shot. Oh, airport lock incoming. Airport lock incoming. Boom! That didn't mean one shot. Well, it will now. Boom! Oh, here comes the airport lock. Here comes the airport lock. Boom. Uh, okay, well, that's going to get hurt. But that's fine. Oh, he's trapping it in there. Interesting. Interesting. And now this is probably going to go in and kill the infantry? What's it going to really kill? This this anti-air or artillery? Is it going to go for the lock or is it going to go for the attack? Let's see what he does here. Well, it's looking pretty good right now. He's going for the cap or the lock. Boom. So now no more copters, no more fighters over here. He did blast open this pipe seam, so this actually can reach both the fighter and this over here. So Blue actually did bust open this pipe seam. I didn't notice it until now. I'm not entirely sure when he, he did that. He did this a while ago. Wow, he actually busted open the pipe seam. Wow, day like uh, 14. Hmm. So he has more front shifting ability. But now, oop, but now Red controls the airport. Mm, how's Blue gonna fight back? And he's fighting into a superpower, so he's gonna have max defense. Mech comes in, gets that beautiful vision from the mountain. Mechs aren't terrible here because you already have the T-copters. And you already have, uh, you know, T-copters in position from the comp towers and from up here. Might as well spam some mechs. They're cheap, affordable. Don't break the butt. Don't break the bank. You can really budget for them. So this actually decides to kill a copter rather than kill this fighter. So that's an interesting choice. I guess he just wants to... Bye-bye, Neo Tank. It was nice knowing you. It was nice knowing ya. Red maintains the, the, the cap over here, but uh... Oh, that is such a dead Neo Tank. That is such a dead Neo Tank. Oh, is he going for the lap cap? No, it's to reveal what's over here. Dangus! And now you have to... Mm, I don't think you can defend that. So you got your kill, but that anti-air is gonna murder you. But it won't kill you in one shot, at least. So, see what he can do about that. Maybe he can surround? Boom! Not quite a one shot. Boom, kills off the fighter. Okay, what are these gonna it, Okay, he's gonna try to block. And he will, the bomber won't be able to be killed. He can't reach the bomber, I don't think. And we're down to 18 units apiece. Like I said, Max likes the lower units for all around. You don't want to let Grit proliferate all his units. And Red is keeping up. I think the kill to death still favors Grit. Yeah, because he's definitely has six more deaths. The thing there's equal is because red is spamming copters. Blue is not spamming as many copters because his copters aren't as good. But red is really hammering home. Two copters a turn. Two copters a turn. Two copters a turn. Four units a turn. Four units. Two bases, two airports. Two bases, two airports. Whereas blue is going for more. Two bases, one airport. Two bases, two bases, two bases, one airport. Less total value. Less total 
units. So that's why Red's able to keep in this. The two airports are crucial for Max on this map. If there's one airport, I think Grid just wins. But if there's two airports, he can really swarm, murder the Neo Tank, and really swarm with the copters, get an airport lock over here. So I really like what I'm seeing from Red so far. He needs to retreat over here. I would not cap there. Go to the go to this over here, get some intel of what's going on. Because he's going all in over here, you can expect a counterattack. Bye bye fighter. Or weakened at least. Donkus, but yeah, you're not getting the bomber. But what's this bomber do now? There's no high-tech units to really kill. So he probably needs to retreat. Um, because there's two anti-air right here, unless he can kill both of them. He might actually be able to kill both of them. The tank kills one, copter finishes off the other. This one kills the one in the forest. Actually, he can't. Oh, no, he can't, because there's another anti-air here, and there's a fighter here. He's probably going to have to retreat, maybe? We'll see what he does. If he has a power, maybe he can attack into this. Okay, he's going to heal this up. I, I agree with that. You have two airports. You can afford to heal it somewhere. It looks like he is retreating. Smartly, wisely. Um... He knows something fishy is going on over here, so he, he wisely is not going to allow this cap. He wants to maintain equal income, but if I'm great, I'm feeling pretty good. You had a lot of threats over here, but you survived the onslaught. You got airport lock, but you're able to fight back. And, uh, you know, equal amount of units, actually a bit higher, because he will be able to make his four units this turn, but kills off the recon. The thing about red, he doesn't have that many recons. Like, the recons he does get all murdered. He throws them to the front line and he's, he's, he like lets them die. The recons. Whereas blue takes a little bit better care of his recons. Uh, and I feel like both of them need to be pumping out more. Red needs to be pumping out more recons. Double recon, double copters. Double recon, double copters. I think that's doable, right? No, it's not. That's 26k. But still, like, if you save up a little bit of money, it's definitely doable. So... Yeah, I like in blue has better intel, which is not a good sign if you're if you're uh, Max. You want to have better intel as Max. So that's going to be a kill. He's probably going to spot that... Okay, okay. He's going to spot that artillery in the forest. Spot what's over here. Reveals it. Copter comes in. There's a fighter over here. He needs anti-air. That's the story of the game. Red, build anti-air. You can't just be plucking around with all these units without anti-air. You need to reveal what's on here as well. Reveal what's on there. Oh boy. So that, 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 uh, that's gonna live. So build a fighter then? If you're not building an anti, you need a fighter. Nope. Okay, so red, you need anti, man. You're facing grit, I get it, but this is two airport map. You need to build anti. You literally saw him build a fighter. You need to have a response to that. And he has no response. Here comes a snipe attack. This is gonna murder some stuff. And he's going in. He needed a fighter this turn. He needed an anti two turns ago. Now he has no counter attack. He's got neutered here. He got neutered. He's a neutered Nancy. Just and then there's another fighter. If he, hell, if you kill this fighter, there's another one waiting in the wings. Blue gets it. Blue gets it. This is a fighter map. This is an anti-air map. You need anti you need fighter. Red, what are you doing, man? You need the units. And he has to retreat. He has to just take that. He's like, slap in the face. He's like, oh. He just leaves. He can't fight back. You just die if you do. So he has to retreat. Sad walk of shame for the bomber. He can barely get out of range of that fighter. Finally builds that. Finally builds an anti -air. And this... I don't even know what that's doing over there. But now Blue's got a counterattack at the top. Blue's winning on both fronts, it seems. Red's got to pull this out of the hat. He was looking great over here before, but then lack of anti airs are dooming him. Max Blast, that's a super. What is he going to get out of this? I'm curious. Why did he use it before revealing where his stuff was? Um, I do not like this power. What the literal clock? Oh god, he's going to get murdered this turn. Oh god, he's gonna get murdered this turn, isn't he? Boom. Grit's gonna use his power. Okay, I guess he's not gonna see this. Oh, he could have even got he could have hit the uh, bomber if he had vision, but he didn't use his recon first. That's why you use your recon first. Move your recon attack reveal first. He could have actually hit that bomber and done devastating amount of damage, but he didn't do it. Down 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 down. But now he sees the bomber and he's shifting both his fighters northward, no doubt. And now the unit count is getting pretty near insurmountable. 
So Red, what's he gonna do here? He's gonna sack his anti-air for a copter. That's not a great trade at this point in the game. I know you get an extra 1k advantage, but you can pump out copters very easily from here. Whereas anti-air, you can only have two bases you can pop them from. So I wouldn't even take that trade without anything to follow up because you're gonna lose that. You're gonna lose the copter afterward. Down, 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 down. And now, oh, you hate to see it. The bomber just sitting there doing nothing. I mean, it already did a lot of damage. It killed the Neo tank, but it's just kind of sitting around there and you're in range, dude. Bye bye, bomber. It was nice knowing you. Grit's gonna use a superpower or power. Snipe attack. That's gonna be a one shot on that bomber. Bye bye, bomber. Donk. Yep. This might be a G-Jizzle move right here. Boomba. Boom. To the ba. Wait, 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 wait. Why didn't this go and kill the bomber? Oh, he's afraid there's something in the forest, I guess. Attack this here. Wait, does this kill this copter? Move this over here. Kill the copter. This kills the bomber. Why is he not killing the bomber? Huh. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get that. I would have killed the bomber. There's literally nothing, no counterattack to that. He builds another fighter. Oh my god. Grid is the one building all the fighters. And he's dominating in the unit count. Oh, Max Force, what are you going to do though? Boom, boom, boom. Bomber, what's it going to do? Retreat. The bomber has to go back and refuel. It's got low fuel. It's Wimpkin Bomber. I mean, it's, it's done its job. It's got a Best Buy gift card. It's got a Circuit City gift card. But it's starting to look really bad for Red. He needs to get some of his unit count up. He needs to have some counterplay. Luckily for him, it's still equal uh, income, but like that's all he has going for him right now. Boom, ba, boom, boom. The unit count is just getting moited. Boom, because the copter. Boom, because the fighter. He kills another tank. Moves in his anter. These fighters, the fighter squad by Blue is the grit fighter squad. Who would have thunk it? The grit fighter squad doing work this game. And now look at this. How do you fight into this? You just need a recon over here for vision, and then you're golden. Four artillery? How do you fight into that? Two of them in the forests. The other two on cities? It's hard to kill them. He's going, he's going, he's awfully close to getting a airport cap. In fact, he isn't within range of an airport cap. Oh, if I'm red, what do you do here, man? What do you do here? You fight some stuff? Uh, this is not looking good for red. Dead. Cap. Cap. I think this game is over, man. I don't know how you come back. I don't know how you come back. Boom, boom. Look at this death ball. How do you... And he's still fighting into it? Yeah, Muji has to resign here. Man, I thought he had some really good plays in there. Early game, it was looking great, but he just didn't have any answer for the fighters. He had no anti-air. That was the bit story of the game. No anti-airs to kill the fighters, to kill the bombers. He just needed anti-air. He didn't have it. And the copters went wild. Blue pumped out copters just like Red did. Red was looking pretty good early. Okay, so Red played bad at the beginning. Like right here, he needs to front shift down here. Attack and front shift, or don't attack and front shift them up here. Shift down and attack, or shift up and don't attack. One of the two. He can't do both. He stayed here, and he attacked there. Bad move. And Blue got the properties, he leaves a lot of units. But Red's not dead there. Red has some counterplay, he kills both of these, these uh, artillery, weakens them. Looking still looking pretty decent up here. Pushes in. Pushes in. Blue overextends a little bit right here. Gets punished. Red gets the cap, so it's not looking too bad for Red here. He has some chances right here. However, he has no real follow-up. He gets the bomber, so this is where like, Red is looking pretty good, but then, like I said, look at all these anti They're swarming, and Red has so many copters. They have no answer. He has, no he has tanks, but they're kind of out of range. He only has one tank over there. And that was just downhill. Because he was looking pretty good. Look at look at the stats right here. Looking pretty good. Thing is, he didn't have any capping infantry as well. I don't know why. He should have had some capping infantry. Um, he, got, he got no compensation for the attack. He had a great attack. Notice how blue, on the other hand. He has compensation. He attacks down here. And he can compensate and get some... Or he tries at least. Red did have some compensation down here, actually. The attack up, up there, actually, he got compensation down here. He got what he wanted, and I think he shifted those northward afterward. Or not. Anyway. I thought Red had some good chances here, but he kind of blew with the Antair. I love the bomber, and I love this 1 HP copter spotting the Neo Tank. The Neo Tank literally killed one recon and died. So that bomber was a masterpiece. I really like that bomber. I think he should have teched up to fighters earlier on as well. 
Uh, but yeah, he needs more tanks and artillery, or anti-air. Tank, artillery, and tank, anti-air, copter. Tank, anti-air, copter. That's 24k. He had 24k the majority of the game. Tank, anti-air, copter. That was a beautiful mix right there. And I think he was a little too reckless with his infantry, because he had, he murdered them all, like, sacking them into, like, here. Look at all these infantry, ready to get some, like, compensation. Sacked them all here. So then later on, when he's winning, they're all dead. He can't cap this. He can't cap this. He can't cap this. Ah, I hate it. You should have just left them alive. Pull back here. Then you attack, and then you get all those juicy properties, too. But he really couldn't resist. He had to have his infantry at the front lines, taking all the damage. No, no. Sit back. Then you attack, and you have the compensation. Don't put your... I know they're the cheapest unit, but you need your infantry. Imagine getting two properties here. 25k to 21k. You're looking a lot better then. Grit can't spam his fighters anymore. You can start spamming fighters. You can start spamming double anti-air copter. You're looking pretty damn good. So don't sacrifice your units like that. Like I said, Grit wins off unit count. So don't make it easier for him by sacking your units. Even if they're cheap 1,000 units, I don't care. Don't sack them like this. Like. Maybe you sack one to interrupt that. Bide your time a little longer. Don't sack all of them. Don't sack all of them like that. And then, that's all you have left. They even hunted down that sad one. The one HP infantry wasn't even a threat, but murdered. So, and then, yeah, I just put his infantry on the front line over here, on the shoal over here. I'm sure it got killed. Or one of them got killed. Yeah, let's see what he did here. No, I guess he retreated over here. But anyway. Anti-air, anti-air, anti I think they both still played pretty well. I think Grid does have an advantage for the most- I don't know, this is a very equal map. I really like this map in terms of this matchup because of the two airports. I think it does give Max a lot more opportunities that he wouldn't have in a normal Grid-Max matchup. Typically, Grid is definitely favored. You know, just because two base, uh, it's just difficult. Unit count is king, and if Grid is winning on unit count on a two base map, it's harder to catch up. So you really have to spam copters, and then Grit knows this, any good Grit knows this, and they spam anti-air, and High Noon is a good Grit, admittedly, so he spammed a lot of anti-air because he knew the only way Red's going to make up for that unit count is by spamming air units, and he was well prepared, spammed copters, or sorry, he spammed fighters, spammed anti-air, and he just looked really well, uh, really good on this map, so well played by High Noon, well played by Muji early on, but I think he just got a little tired and was like, uh, and just gave up later but uh well played interesting matchup interesting map i like this map personally uh but yeah i hope you guys learned something hope you guys were entertained and i'll see you guys next time peace